Ian, first of all, today's podcast is fire as we talk about how can I supercharge my IBC policy. But before we get to that, let me tell you about the dumpster fire I literally, I literally had to put out before our investment house <laughs> went up in flames. So I, I'm leaving out the other night. The, the power goes out in our whole neighborhood. And as you know, I live at the very back of a little small community. It's got a gravel road. There's like six or seven homeowners down my gravel road. This is about a mile long. Nobody comes here. It's dead end. Dead ends in my driveway. And I'm leaving out of the neighborhood because Megan's like, I don't want to try to cook by candlelight. Here, go get us something. And, I, and I'm about halfway up the road. I, I encounter like this 16, 17 year old kid. I'm like, ah, this is a little bit odd. What's he doing down here? And so I kind of whip around. And about the time he turned around in, in my neighbor's driveway and I pulled up next to him and rolled down the window. It's like, hey, man, can I help you? And he's like, uh, I'm trying to find my friend on Life 360. Have you seen like a black minivan? I'm like, uh, that's super odd. I'm like, no, I, had, that's super I, was, I was like, uh, there's, there's nobody down here for that, that. You know, like you're definitely in the wrong spot. And so I go back to the house and thinking, mm, I don't know what's going on here. Like, you know, is this just random occurrence? You know, my, my mind with all the, the crazy, you know, uh, drama movies I watch, you know, comes to mind. I'm like, let me go load up a shotgun. Right. Like, let's just, let's go let's Jason just be, Let's, yeah. let's just be prepared, right? Like if force comes worse, I was just going to be prepared. So uh, I, I tell Megan, I was like, all right, just let's we'll just watch out, make sure nothing's going on. But I'm going to go up, back up to the front of the neighborhood. I don't know if I'm going to end up leaving now to go get food or not, but I just want to go up to front and just see what's going on. Maybe I can see where the power, like maybe there's a tree across the road. Or something. And I'm driving up the road. And she calls me. And she's like, Russ, there's a black car. In my parents' driveway, which they live right next to us. So we live at the very back in like this like 30-acre compound just by herself. And she was going to walk there because they had a, a generator with a power on. But they're not there. And I'm like, what? So I turn around. I'm flying back, Joey. I'm like, it's on now. Here we go. Like, th this is about to be the time. <laughs> this is officially Jason Bourne. <laughs> this, is, yeah. this is the moment. Which, by the way, I left the shotgun at the house. I got a baseball bat. Yeah, <laughs> like, what course. am I going to do? Right. You know, like baseball days go back. And so I'm flying down my driveway and all of a sudden here comes the car. And I'm like, OK, uh, this let's see what's going to happen. And about that time, right, right. I was about to get there, you know, like drama at its all time high. My wife calls me. It's like crisis averted. It's our niece. She just <laughs> drove over from my uh, my sister's house to use the bathroom since the power is out at their house. And I was like, oh, okay. So heart rate like was at like like 170. Right. And it's like slowly coming back. And I'm like, all right, man. Wow, that's that was a little tough. So I'm going to drive up to the front of the neighborhood anyway, finish the thing I said I was going to do. I pull up in front of the house because the house that you and I bought, the investment home that you all have heard us talk about, the one that we we're going to make this fabulous short-term rental with luxury accommodations. We were going to be able to host wedding parties and family reunions and other people. It's going to be amazing. They got shut down, couldn't do it. We've been had it on the market to sell. We actually have a buyer going to close here in the next 25, 30 days. I, I pull in front of it and it's got a traffic cone, Joey. It's got a traffic cone, an orange traffic cone sitting in the driveway. Okay. That's like super That's like, odd, right? Like yeah. you don't get that. And I know, by the way, this story is getting long, but trust me, you're going to stick around for this. So I, I like, I'm like, what is going on? And then over off to the side, like in the trees, like off the road, off the gravel road are two cars. Not it, And one of them was not the little car that I passed, the little guy on the road. The other one was not the black minivan. But two other cars. And so I really back on high alert again. I'm like, uh oh. And Megan's talking to me on the phone. I was like, go ahead and call the cops. I don't know what's going on, but something's going on. And I drive up a little bit and all of a sudden I realize what was going on. I start seeing taillights up on where the like the paved road coming out of the real neighborhood into our little back, uh, like gravel road community. There's taillights. I drive up there and there's like 20 cars stacking up on that road parking with 16 to 17 and 18 year olds jumping out. What? Yeah. And I'm like, 
I pulled up right next to this little girl and I was like, um, what are you doing? And she's like, uh, 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 <laughs> I was like, yeah, your party just got busted. The cops are on the way. You better bolt before they get here. You're going to get in trouble. And I pull up next to these two other kids that are walking up. I tell them the same exact thing. So I, I flip around. I drive back up in front of our house. I start honking the horn at those two cars that were parked there. Like, get out of here. And they're like looking at me like, what? I, what I, like, you guys got to be the dumbest bunch of kids. Like, get out of here. So the cops finally come. The kids had marked the house with the orange cone. They had marked the entrance into our, again, pretty remote uh, neighborhood with orange cones. And they had obviously been telling their friends and like spotting it with like Life 360 to get there. Because it's not like you don't put the address in and get there really easy. Probably they didn't even know what the address was. And so the cops come. We go around the house. They had broken into the house. The back door is wide open. One of the windows had been... uh, I guess unlocked somehow and lifted up. And that's how they got into the house and they were getting ready to throw a rager in our, in our house, our investment property. Like, like this house we're selling for like what, what 1.4, $1.5 billion. (laughs) They were getting ready to throw a dumpster fire in there. So it it was, it it was crisis averted. I, I don't know how many were in there before we came. Thankfully, it looked like the majority of them were just on the way. Just getting there, yeah. Uh, so, anyway, thankfully, we, we were able to catch it. I don't know what that has to do with supercharging our policy, but I was like, everybody wants an update on what's going on with that house. Like, are you guys selling it? Well, yes, we're selling it. Yes, we're going to make a profit on it. And yes, we kept it from burning to the stinking ground because it's probably what would have happened if I not got in there. Oh, my goodness. Well, thank you for being there, Russ, for being the hero that you are. And uh, bringing that baseball bat because without that, you know, you, you really probably couldn't got those guys out of there. But. Hey, by, by the way, I, I'm sitting outside the car as the cops are waiting with the baseball bat, and he walks up. He's like, "Baseball bat, huh?" And I was like, "Oh, uh, yeah." I had, I, and he goes, "No, I thought that was amazing." He's like, "I love it." <laughs> he's like, "Heck yeah." Baseball bat. That's great. <laughs> you know, I didn't know if he was going to be like upset about that or not, but he was like, no, I think that's a great idea. All right. Let's jump into this interview. About the, not the interview, this, this uh, round table podcast. And uh, right now, Joey, pull up this chair. Let's belly up. Belly up. Welcome to the wealth without wall street podcast. Your guide to understanding how to get out of the wall street rat race and start your own mailbox money lifestyle. Now, don't let these handsome Southern draws fool you. These financial minds are teaching our country to enhance savings, increase cash flow, and create passive income, all without the help of Wall Street. Are you ready to break through? Now here are your hosts, Russ Morgan and Joey Muray. Welcome into the Financial Freedom Roundtable, where each week we break down complex financial topics so that you can more easily understand them and more importantly, take action on your path to becoming financially free. If this is your first time joining us, welcome. Grateful to have you in the room. I'm Russ Morgan. They call me the idea guy, mostly because lack of follow through guy just didn't sound so cool to me. Enough about me for the moment, though. Let me introduce you to my co-host, the Italian Stallion. He's got the license plate cover to prove it. Mr. Joe Murray. Stallion, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Russ. Uh, you know, what's, what's interesting is today, Cousin Eddie has had some trouble lately. You know, the RV. Yeah. I had to, I had to take her in, take him into the shop. And, of course, there was nobody there to take me home, so I had to get an Uber. Okay. I, told, I was talking to this girl that was driving me back to my car, and uh, I mentioned to her about her podcast and everything, and then I said, was, when she was pulling up, I said, hey, you see the tag there on the back of my, my truck? I said, that's what they call me on the podcast. And she just started laughing. I said, most people just have to take Russ's word for it. He always introduced me that way on the podcast, but you actually got to see the tag <laughs> face-to-face. And she was just like, that is, a, that is a hilarious. So anyway, that, that happened today. Today, our topic is not about your your nickname, self-given, by the way. It's about how can I supercharge my infinite banking concept, policy, or system? Yes. I love that. I, I'm is, grateful. Why is this for, important? 
Well, I'm grateful for a topic like this because anybody who gets infinite banking, who starts to understand it, that it immediately starts to take hold. They say, how can I make this thing go faster? How can I, how can I get to the next level? And first of all, let me just be the, the poo-pooer of your idea. Your one policy, it's not about your policy. Your policy is not going to get better. You can't supercharge it. It's just, it's just made to be what it is. But you need to enhance your system, right? Make it bigger and stronger. And that's what we're going to talk about today. All right. That's my uh, first take, at least. Okay. I don't know what we're talking about, but... I'm going to, I'm going to move on before it gets any more awkward in the room. Speaking of awkward, my man, Mr. Incredible, his superpower is speed to financial freedom. The real beauty of that speed is that it's contagious. JD Hill, say hello to your friends, JD. Uh, uh, hello fans. Uh, thank you, Russell, for letting people know that I'm awkward. Apparently uh, that was a, that was a great intro. I really appreciate that. Thank you. <laughs> it, it, it was really more meant to awkward transition. I made it awkward for you. I don't even think I said fans. I think I said friends. I think I was like between fans and friends and Hey, it's all good. I knew it was going to be awkward. Let's just live in the awkward right now, JD. But speaking of the day's topic, not awkward. Why is it important turtle. for us to talk about how I can supercharge my IBC awesome. policy or system? I think it's important, uh, and this really resonated with me a lot. Um, yeah, you know, I think back to when I started my journey uh, with doing IBC in general. Oftentimes, you can set it up, and if you don't do anything with it, you kind of set it on a shelf, and then the initial enthusiasm that you have for it can dwindle or die. And so, when we start talking about things like this, it helps us to re-engage with why we set it up to begin with. And it can help to recreate that initial enthusiasm that we had before and why we actually go get it off the shelf and start utilizing it and implementing it in our everyday lives and how we can expand um, our ultimate uh, financial freedom journey. I love that. Now, speaking of taking things off the shelf, let me get around the corner to the retiree of the group, the recently married ladies. He is off the table mr catch me if you can when he's not killing bears with his bare hands or spear diving for tuna and he's right here dropping gold nuggets the one and only mark the married haraguchi welcome mark oh man you know i was i was curious how you were going to squeeze that one in there so uh and actually it, that was uh appropriate appropriate so you know as as things change right if, if we're talking about supercharging an ibc system and ibc policy if it's good, why not make it gooder? And, <laughs> and, and in, in, in full on, I just, I actually just thought about this. If you really are practicing the infinite banking concept, if you're implementing this in your day to day, how can you not be supercharging it? Mm. Because just the fact that you're doing it is going to create motion, which is going to get that wheel spinning faster and faster and faster for you. So if you're following it, if you're implementing it, you can't help but be supercharging it. I like that. All right. Let, before we all get into this, let me bring the last coach into the into the round table here. The true financial Sherlock Holmes of our day. No problem. No problem too difficult to solve. If I would just only own, known him earlier, I'd been so much richer. Mr. Ernie Brown. Welcome, Ern. Hey, Russ. And thank you for for letting me in. Glad to be here. <laughs> It almost didn't get out there, man. I don't know what it is. It's like the cat got my tongue today. Thank you for staying alive long enough to bring me in. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is the moment of awkward. Let's just embrace. Let's embrace awkward today. Yeah, the only thing that could make this better would be an embrace. <laughs> in an embrace. Hey, we we have changed. Something has happened. I was doing a little bit of my own. My, my, I messed up in the head. I was doing my own research on supercharging, which okay. when I think supercharge, I think of engines. I think of Fast and Furious, right, JD? <laughs> I think of Vin Diesel yes. and Paul Walker. I went to search supercharger, and all I found was Tesla chargers. <laughs> I swear, five years ago, we looked for superchargers. We're getting pictures of Vin Diesel, and I'm all about that. 
but now I'm just getting Tesla chargers. So I don't know how much value I'll be able to add to this conversation because apparently it's 2022. Yeah. Supercharging (laughs) has definitely got a new meaning. And I, I, I think today when I think supercharge, I feel like if you've built a strategy, the next step is to enhance it, right? Like we want to level up, and that's what I believe that today's discussion is about, right? We're gonna we're gonna break this down from a couple of different angles. I think the the three points that we we'll talk about, which are gonna be gonna be totally random and awkward, since awkward is the new word of the day. Strategy number one is the man in the mirror. I think how we personally perceive that, what we may need to do or stop doing, right? Maybe continue to. How do we win with others? We had Matty J say that partnerships build championships. I think there's a a lot of opportunity within that second point. And the third point is let's let's go to infinity and beyond here. And I, I think thinking outside of our box, expanding our horizon so that what are the craziest ways that we've seen people supercharge their system? Full disclosure, when we get to that point, don't try this at home. This, this one needs an expert. This one needs somebody. Uh, to to make sure you're prepared and ready for that. It's not for everybody. But I do want to break that out because there are people out there doing some pretty cool things. Even one of the people that's right here in this room has done one of those things. And we're going to have him share that with us. All right. First up, let's get over here to Mark. Let's talk about the man in the mirror, Mark. How do you perceive ways that we can take action or make things happen personally that can enhance or supercharge our policies? So for me, it was it was several years ago, and I was I was washing my car, and I realized, you know, I've I've just been listening to music when I wash the car, and I thought, well, that's kind of a waste of time. So I stopped listening to music. I, I've since I'll just about stopped washing my car too, but I stopped listening <laughs> to music when I was washing the car, and I said, you know what, if if a, this is going to take me about twenty minutes or so, why not listen to a podcast? Why not listen to something that can actually motivate my mind and stimulate me to start thinking about other things? And by stopping that one activity and shifting what I was doing during that time frame, that's what exposed me to some other ideas and got my mind thinking about, okay, what are some other creative ways that people are generating additional passive income? And so that goal, you know, of, of learning new things, that podcast led to some investment ideas, which led to other things, which led to me being able to exit the workforce on my own terms. So that, <laughs> was me looking in the mirror saying, all right, what small thing can I do to start pushing the ball forward? And that was it. And what you're talking about too, is this a form of habit hacking, right? Like if you have it, if you have a habit, you have something that you want to embrace, something that you want to put into your life, whatever that may be, maybe a health habit, maybe like you said, it's listening to a podcast. Well, find something you're already doing no matter what, and just attach that thing to it. This is something one of our friends, Sharon Shavasta, talked about, and I, this is how I've applied it. Every time I have to go to the bathroom, which is about every 90 minutes, like a 90-year-old grandma, ah. all of you 90-year-old grandmoms out there, you know what I'm talking about. I, I'm supposed to and need to be getting up and walking around, right? Well, now the bathroom's only like six steps for me. That's not that far. So what I started doing is taking laps around my house. My kids are like looking at me, the dog's looking at me like, why are you wandering around the house? But that's what I'm doing. So what you started doing is said, every time I wash my car, ooh, podcasts, right? So there's something, if you're trying to figure out how to implement a new habit and make sure it sticks, attach it to something like, hey, I wanna listen to a podcast while well, I brush my teeth every morning. I'll just listen to a podcast while I brush my teeth. Whatever that thing is for you, there's a, there's a habit hack for you. All right, I'm going to shut my mouth here. I'm going to come over to you, JD, right? You've, you've observed people who have stopped doing things and have had successful um, benefits out of it. Tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, this one's uh, really fun to talk about. It's a lot more fun than your bladder issues that you're having. <laughs> uh, you, should see a, you should see a doctor for that. But no, I... Um, uh, without naming any names, you know, we work with a ton of entrepreneurs and business owners and investors and uh, was working with this one investor uh, entrepreneur. And he's like most business owners. And I'm, you know, I'm one as well. He's funneling just like everything else, uh, all of his income and cash flow and everything through his, his business checking account. And as we started collaborating and working through how to actually make all of that work together, 
uh, one of the things that we realized is that he could actually stop doing that and he could start utilizing his infinite banking system to run every dollar that he uses for his business, all of his overhead, all of his expenses um, to run specifically through his IBC system. And so we set up uh, two separate policies where he's running uh, over a million dollars a year now through his IBC system for all of his cash flow. Uh, and it is completely and totally just revolutionized the way that he is now uh, obviously operating, not just on the business side, but now he's obviously transferred that over to, to the personal side as well. I love that. And when you, when you can take a look at that, right, you can start seeing opportunities, but you have to pause and take a look. Joey, you know about this, right? You know that there was a time in your life where you had to stop doing something that totally enhanced your personal infinite banking system. Tell me more about that. Yeah. So when I first started, I was just blown away by this idea that my money could be doing two jobs at once. Right. And I said, it, the the issue is I don't have enough of my money doing this. So where can I find places where money is just leaking out that I don't really know, or how can I maximize and, and optimize this? And so I stopped putting money into things like my 401k, like contributing, no, no more contributions to my 401k, because I realized that that wasn't getting me closer to my goal. It was just being siphoned out of my cash flow. Well, that allowed me then to have additional cash to put into a new policy. I stopped paying debt the same way that I had always been paying. And I, I quit putting money into all these different silos that didn't have access. And so just, I've shared this on the show before, but my first, very first policy, just that Bunny Hill policy is $2,000 a month. Well, by the end of the first year, I came back to you, Russ, and I was like, hey, Russ, what could I, could I do it this way? If I, if I did this money this way, could, could I start a second policy for that? And you're like, yeah. And then I came back to you, I'm like, okay, sweet, let's do that one. And I came back after that, I said, could I do this if I if I reallocated my 401k this way? Could I do it? This? You're like, yeah, you could do that. I'm like, Russ, why didn't you tell me this whenever I first started? I could have been so much farther along. And you're like, you weren't ready yet. You couldn't see it. You had to see it to, to really feel confident about doing it. And so, man, started saving over $60,000 a year in the first year just by stopping the flow of cash that I just gotten accustomed to. I think part of this too is there's a there's a saying that Nelson Nash, the author of the Becoming Your Own Banker book, right? The the where this whole concept of infinite banking really came out, he would say this is a, a concept that cannot be taught. It has to be caught. So the reason why we share this topic over and over again, after clarity, after having a real clear plan of what you want to accomplish, this is the first step on your path to becoming financially free. I think so many people miss it, right? It's not the sexy thing. It's not the thing that creates tons of cash flow. It's not a, you know, it's not a piece of real estate I could put on my Instagram page and show you how I just bought this thing, right? But it is the thing that will make all of those things happen and will continue to make those things happen. All right, Earn, you also had an experience where you had to stop doing something that helped you early on in your journey. Tell us about that. Yeah, well, I, I, I like what you just said. It reminds me where there's a lack of vision, the people perish. So we just have the benefit of sharing what we have found for ourselves and what we get to help other people to uncover for themselves. I hope this helps you. When I first started, a lot like Joey, it was, I need to stop thinking about money the way that I've been thinking about it. And so I learned about infinite banking. I said, all right, I want to put this in place in some level. So I wanted to start contributing a little bit of cash flow that I thought that I had and that I could think about putting towards this. But what I realized is that I was planning to start paying down my student loans as quickly as I could. So I thought if I could just get, get past this, I'll be able to do so much more. And so I had to reevaluate. Then I realized if I didn't do that, if I stopped that, I could add the dollars that I was going to put extra towards student loans into my insurance policy. So I was able to find immediately several hundred dollars more a month into my first IBC policy. And what that enabled me to do was still not pay off the student loans because I now see that as one of the best debts that I have. And it enabled me to catch a vision to start three more insurance policies past that. And much like Joey, radically increase my savings rate. But it also enabled me to much faster build the cash that I needed to get into the first deal. 
And that's been, that is, that is altered the trajectory of my life by decades. I think just, just starting with that, that one thing. I love that. Russ, I remember my dad specifically say to me, Joey, you gotta go to college. I don't want you to end up like me. And you know what my dad was saying is in order for things to change, things have to change. You can't end up just like me. Well, I think, I mean, we, we, as parents, sometimes we take on the burden thinking about our kids and, and how we want something better for them. And we want to know what will their future look like if I don't take action, if I don't do something different. See, in my house, I'm the role model. You're your kid's role model. And the buck stops with you. It's time to take action. If you're ready to take action, join us at wealthwithoutwallstreet.com forward slash passport and get started on your own journey to financial freedom. All right, let's jump back into this episode. All right, now to true form, right? You guys all said things that people needed to stop doing. I've got to start something, right? I just can't go the stop route. I got to go start route. And here, here's one of the things I've observed. There's someone who recently joined our passive income mastermind, I don't know, in the last six months or so. And when he came to us, he was doing a lot of things right. He, he had built a, a decent amount of passive income. He had sold a couple of different businesses. He had actually started down the road of putting six figures or more into his infinite banking system. But what he didn't have is a group of people who are at a higher level around him, challenging him on a daily basis. And so when he joined a money mastermind, he realized that, man, he thought his infinite banking system was a superpower, but it really needed a serious upgrade, right? Then what happened? He, he got on the, a call with you, JD. And after that call, realized the opportunity that sat before him and the things that he could do that could help him upgrade, right? He went from being level one where he had insurance policies on himself to getting insurance policies in his, on, uh, on his family and then looking at how to expand that both into his business but also into his investment opportunities. I think that that's another thing that we could do. We can start getting around other people that are higher levels than us. And what they will do is pull us up to that level, right? So I think that's a great idea. Let's let's move to the next, next point, which is how do we win with others? How is it that truly being around others, I kind of was giving a prelude to that. How do you believe, Mark, that others can win by being in partnerships or around in a community of other like-minded people. I know that for me, if, if I'm in a group and so for example, the passive income mastermind and in one of our early sessions for the year, there was an opportunity to do the mastermind and connect with each other and actually share, Hey, what is your goal for the year? What are you trying to do this year? What problem are you trying to solve? And so I stated a passive income goal that I wanted to add X amount of additional passive income. Didn't know how, didn't really know, you know, have a true earmark for it, just that, hey, this was what I wanted to add. Well, in being in that group, being around those other people, having stated the intention, well, now there's accountability. Once you say it, now it's out there and there are people who are gonna be asking, hey, how's it coming along? And then just being connected to other passive income opportunities that actually have now funded that goal. And that goal, which I didn't realize at the time, was 50% of my wife's income. Just by chance, I chose that number. I didn't choose it saying, hmm, what would be 50% of what she makes? How would that work out? I was like, no, no, I'm, I, I had a goal. It was what I had from the beginning. And it just so happens that, you know what? everything works out for a reason. That was exactly 50% of her income and she's actually now working 50%. So worked out just fine. I love that. So awesome. So, so cool. How about you, Ern? Well, I, I just think back when I first met you guys, I was deciding what, what, where am I going to begin working? And my whole life, I thought I, I see myself working in a big, in a big enormous corporation and growing to be a big part of that. And I chose to come work with you guys. Not that you have a small company, but when it was the three of us that day, you know, I thought, all right. So I chose that and that enabled me to every single day be around you guys learning. And that helped me to take control of my finances in a way different than I have been exposed to so far. 
that enabled me to put myself in a in a much bigger cash position much faster. It also honestly probably enabled me to grow my income much faster had I gone a different route. And that enabled me to meet people that I get to now work around like you, Mark, and, and learn and share ideas. And so I, that put me in a position to say yes to the Passive Income Mastermind Retreat, the first one. And that at that retreat gave me an idea that I didn't think was possible that I took down and wrestled down. And now we're about to about to put that deal in place with this land business that we're creating. And that has been all inside of six years. To, and it all comes back to a decision to put myself in a room with with you guys and what that's led me to. In all fairness, though, you actually came and there was four of us and you were number five and you almost didn't make it because you really sucked at the whole hamburger thing. OK, so, <laughs> I mean, I'm just going to throw that out there. I know it ended up being just three of us because you ran those other two guys off. I think they were still mad about the hamburger deal. <laughs> I, I I am sick and tired of talking about this hamburger. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, you know there's always these these dominoes in our life, right? There's always something like you just said. The earning one thing led to another thing that led to another thing, and I, to me, I, when I when I see this and I say you know it's better with others, like how do we partner with others? I, I remember Joey, you and I. I don't know how many years ago it was. We, we went to a podcast movement, which is where like podcasters from all over the world were, were organizing. We were brand new podcasters. We, we knew very little. And we attended that event. And in true fashion, like Joey, he finds the most successful people in the room and starts partnering up. Right. Like he starts <laughs> getting into the discussion and he comes over to me. He's like, hey, by the way, uh, we're getting ready to head over to this after party uh, with this, uh, this guy named, uh, John Lee Dumas and, uh, his, his fiance, uh, Kate Erickson, she, she said, come on. And uh, we're gonna go to that. I'm like, okay. I didn't even know who that was. Right. I mean, the EO fire uh, podcaster, he has, I don't know, a couple hundred, couple million downloads a month. I was like, oh yeah, sounds good. That, that probably, we probably learned something from that guy. <laughs> and, and we're there at this little small after party. And all of a sudden another guy I get to introduce myself, say, Hey, how's it going? And the guy says, Oh, my name is Pat Flynn. I'm like, Okay, cool. I don't know who Pat Flynn is. Oh, that's the guy that's keynoting the whole podcast movement. He only started a podcast called Smart Passive Income and and reports every single month how he brings in two hundred to three hundred thousand dollars a year or a month in affiliate passive income. And I thought, ha, that's not a bad idea. We ought to figure out how to implement those things, right? So I went back after that one little thing, that domino effect. Went back and said, what is it that we could learn from these two individuals? And one of the things that I really loved is that they both on their website were publishing how much passive income that they made every single month. And it was almost like, hey, I'm going to document this process and I'm going to be accountable to everyone around me to that. Well, to me, that's what helped me grow and supercharge my own passive income. But through that passive income growth, where did I funnel the cash flow? I didn't start consuming it. I started funneling it to a new insurance policies, right? My, my my cash values and my the premiums I was putting in just started stacking on top of each other. So I look back, just like you were saying, Ernie, it's amazing when we get around like-minded people, how they can push us forward. Joey, I, I'm sorry, I've still a lot of your thunder, I'm sure, but chime in here if you want to. Well, you know, I'm used to it. But the, the deal is, is because of our partnership on passive income, it has just led to, as you mentioned, I mean, you hear us report it every month. We have excess cash flows that we didn't have before we started doing those things and they have to go somewhere. So we have created premiums in excess of a hundred thousand dollars just in our joint business accounts, right? That we've started as a result of this. And so I want to highlight that for, for you who are listening that you, you, you're like, hey, I really am hesitant to get into passive income by myself. Um, I, what about getting with other people, right? What about finding people that have better um, insights, experience, whatever it may be that you feel like you're lacking in and partner up with them? Because that passive income you can create becomes a way that you can supercharge your, your own system. And I want to point out something specific to our inner circle members or those of you that need to join the inner circle. Next month, we're going to be talking about 
investing with friends, right? And creating your own tribe. And that's Travis Smith is going to be sharing his platform that makes it super easy to do that. And Russ, I know you and I have talked to him and we're like, this is amazing. Can't wait to share it with people. If you're not part of our inner circle, jump on a call with one of these guys, right? Learn more about it and join up today. Um, go to wealthwithoutwallstreet.com forward slash free call. You don't want to miss that call if you've been waiting on the sidelines to start investing. Yeah, that's a great way to to be able to start partnering and investing with friends and family, right? That platform gives a lot of insight to that. We're going to go deep there. I'm excited about that. All right. Now, the last point, maybe the most exciting one, maybe the one that you decided, this is why I want to listen to this podcast because I want to hear you jokers talk about how do I supercharge my infinite banking system? All right. Well, I got to put that disclaimer back out there as a reminder this is a moment where just because somebody else can skateboard off the top of their house, you shouldn't try it either. I'm going to say the same thing here. There's some ideas that are coming and going to hit you and you're going to be like, whoa, I have one of those. I could do that same thing. But the answer is maybe not, right? There, We heard uh, one of our mentors say this the other day, he said, you know, the saying when you say you see somebody doing it and they're successful and you go, oh, because they did it, right? Because Ernie did it, because JD did it, I can do it. Well, no, that's that's bull crap. You don't have the same experiences. You don't necessarily have the same surroundings. You don't necessarily have the same cash. You don't necessarily have the same opportunities. So don't just assume because someone did it that you can do it too. But what I hope will come from this is that it will open your mind to ideas. And I'm going to start with you, Joey, because we were we were talking a lot about infinite banking. Like you really went down the rabbit hole with me early on when you were just a a client of mine, and you started attending even some of these mastermind events with people who just do infinite banking, right? And you were getting your wheels turning. And you came to me with this really crazy idea. And at first I was like, I don't know about this. And then I thought, this may be just complete genius. Well, as I mentioned, when I first started figuring this out, I was like, man, how can I get more of my cash at work in a system like this? It just makes sense. Like it's super efficient. And one of the places that my money was locked up in, you've heard us say this numerous times, my 401k had hundreds of thousands of dollars stuck in it. And now I realize that's a problem. Until then, I thought, man, I was really smart, you know, putting money in a 401k, like I'm getting ahead. Yeah, no, it was not the case. And um, anyway, I, I went, I started researching my 401k, looking into all the details behind it. How can I get access? Well, either I have to be buying a house, my first house to get access to the money, or I have to leave my job. Like there's very few ways I could do it, or I could take a loan from it. And I remember thinking, I don't know if that makes a lot of sense, but I started looking at the terms. Well, I could take a five-year loan from my 401k and I could take up to two at any time. And it had to be a year after that I could I could start the second one, right? So anyways, this is a little bit more detailed than you probably want to know. But the bottom line is, is I real, realized I could take a $25,000 loan today, fund a policy with it, create cash in a new policy, and then if I needed to, be able to borrow from that to pay back the 401k loan. Now I used my regular cash flow monthly to pay back that 401k loan and I just allow my policy to grow. The second year I took out a second loan of 25,000 because the max I could pull out was 50 at any time. And I started the second year premium with that second loan for my 401k. And then I turned around and I paid off the first year 401k loan in, in whole. And bottom line is it started a new policy that didn't exist and it was there for me for windfalls in the future. So again, be careful with this. Don't go up, run out and do this. Make sure that you're, uh, you know, you're thinking through all the details. But man, it was a way that I could uh, create another policy. And I'm glad I did. My man, the, the ability to complicate the simple. Like you had a fantastic <laughs> idea and you <laughs> destroyed it. <laughs> it was right there in your hand. And you crumbled it up, and threw it out the window. Can I can I clear this up for everyone as you're riding Please. down the road? Can I just... speaking, it's, speaking of awkward, 
<laughs> what did he do? What? Just tell me again. I mean, I know they're going to be like, oh, hold on. 15 second rewind. 15 second rewind. No, what, it was what, clear in my head. Okay. It what was, was the thing clear. that Joey did? <laughs> Joey started an insurance contract by a loan out of his 401k. At the end of the year, he had some cash value, right? And he's making small loan repayments every single month because that's what was required with the 401k. He took some of the cash value out of the, 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 um, the insurance falls, he took a loan against it and paid down on his 401k, which gave him more ability, as he said, to take another loan. So then he could pay his second year's premium. And now they have more cash value. And he just did that every single year until after what, three or four years, Joey, you said, I'm out of this place. I, I, I want to be an entrepreneur, right? Blowing the stump. Yeah. At absolutely. that point in time, you, you had an insurance policy that had been funded for like four years. You had a little bit of a loan against your insurance policy, not against your 401k because you'd paid that down. And then you had a, a place that you needed to store some cash, right? It, like most people, right? When we have a uh, we have a sudden windfall and that could come in lots of different ways. Yours was you left a job and now you had access to this 401k and you cut ties with that thing, you stuffed it in there. So good for you. I hope that helps you. All right, let's, let's clean this up here. Mark. Save this man, would you please? Because I know that you have been looking into a strategy and using a strategy over the last 12 months that I think is pretty amazing as well. Yeah, I was just I was just waiting for Joey to say in somewhere in there that he had a magic eight ball and uh asked the magic eight ball, is this is this gonna work? <laughs> uh mine was we we we'd actually heard about an idea um last year, I believe it was, where somebody comes into a, a substantial windfall. And in, in, in certain scenarios, we've got this windfall, but we don't have the means or necessarily the, the structure to stuff it into a policy and then make a premium the next year, right? We, we, we haven't thought through it. We're not really sure how we can make that work. Or we've got some other concerns. Well, there's actually some creative ways where we can actually take that windfall, plow it into a policy and give you the time frame it takes to then go ahead and turn around borrow against, generate passive income, and have that be in position to pick up and run with it from there. So there are these creative ways to supercharge. And again, probably the, the, the best way to figure that out is to hop on a call, explain your situation, and we can work through some of these creative ideas. And again, like we said earlier, it's not for everybody. Um, with great power comes great responsibility. I mean, just ask Spider-Man. So... Mm. Man, I thought that was Obi Wan Kenobi. I didn't. Thank you for clarifying. <laughs> <laughs> I get my superheroes mixed up. How about you, uh, JD? What do you think? What, what's what's one pretty unique strategy that someone has done that's pretty outside of the box that have, you have seen how they've supercharged their system? Yeah, I think um, because everything for me is so uh, relevant and close to real estate. Um, and so that's the, the, the biggest thing that, that comes to my mind. And so, uh, working with some folks in multifamily, uh, syndicators. And so they're, they're coming into big, big chunks of capital at all times. And, uh, they've got money sitting obviously on the sidelines because they need to have them for obviously future deals. And so, um, as we've, we've worked through a number of different dynamics, trying to figure out, okay, how do we take all these different types of capitals that are, that are going to be coming in, uh, from these different syndicated deals, uh, but then run them through an IBC system. Um, but we're talking about large, you know, amounts of cash. And so there's, there's limits that the insurance companies will allow you to put uh, on people, right. Uh, based on net worth, income, age, all those types of things. Well, when we can combine that with key man policies as well, right. Where, where the syndicator is still the owner, they still have access to the cash. And so there's some creative things that we've been able to do from that front of being able to cram as much capital into all these different policies where the main person still owns and controls all of it. And so has access to all of it that he can then deploy into all these other different multifamily deals. Um, and so that's, that's something else that we've been able to, to look at as well uh, on, on working with folks in the multifamily space. I like that. How about, how about you, Ern? Yeah. I, I just bought a index universal life policy. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. Oh kidding. man, Ooh. that just that uh, you did top Joey on confusion there. But think, hey, but at least it earned seven gonna, to twelve percent, right? I'm gonna I mean, earn so much in this, <laughs> or I'm gonna design it, and it's gonna be just amazing. The way that I designed it is just the. If you don't design it this way, you are leaving money on the table. But by the way, everybody, this is inside baseball with our group. This is definitely pure sarcasm at its best. Go yeah. ahead, Ern. Yeah. Uh, well, we talk about how can we supercharge our system. And by the way, <clears throat> Joey said this, it's, we need to put as much premium into our insurance policies as we need to, right? So now what are creative strategies where we can do that? There's only so much that we need to put in, but we talk about supercharging strategies. We look at cash flows. JD, what is the biggest expense the family pays every single year. What's the family's biggest expense? Uh, define expense. Uh, probably the mortgage. Okay. Mark, what is a family's biggest expense every single year? Hmm. Life. Taxes. Taxes. Thank you. Thank you. The a biggest expense for the most families is taxes. And for hmm. the self-employed person, for the entrepreneur, that is a massive chunk of money that they are setting aside and most likely making quarterly payments on. And if we can take that expense and flow that through an insurance policy and premium and specifically through a paid up additions rider, we can create the liquidity that we need to put it into the insurance policy, take a loan and pay the taxes. And we can do that at a 50% or we can do that at 100% rate, but 50% of my taxes or 100%. Just depends on how big of a hole in the loan balance do I want to create. We can do that for X number of years and then evaluate. Am I selling this business? Is there a windfall that I have expected? Is it closer than I thought it was or is it further than I thought it was? And have a place to put future cash back into the insurance policy. And just like Joey created a loan balance with his 401k loan, for the rest of that money to come out, we can do that with tax dollars, look up down the road and have a massive base of cash values that we can be refilling, flowing our cash flows through. And ultimately what's this going to do is ask yourself this question, with any of these strategies, any of these expenses that we're flowing through an insurance policy, how much future income is paying those expenses going to create for you? If it's not going through an insurance policy, the answer is zero. So we, we do this tax strategy and we do this over X number of years and replenish that. We know that at passive income time, we can turn off the premium entirely and create an income stream from that overall growth of cash values. In my opinion, that's the, that is one of the greatest strategies that I get to share with people on how to supercharge their system. What is, uh, when you were talking about that, it made me think of it, but unfortunately I'm struggling today as you all have heard. What is that inventory management system that the uh, the approach where you're not, you're not storing a lot of the, um, the goods in, uh, on hand, but you're, you're, is it just in time? Is that, you know what I'm talking about? So we're basically, yeah. you're, you're just storing just enough, right? To sell and you're constantly reordering. Is that what it is? Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? I, I feel like how many how many people that were in the e-commerce space, right, in 2020 got burned through that strategy, right, by dealing in the just-in-time inventory management, where all of a sudden they, they didn't have access, right, and now their shipping times quadrupled. The cost of the shipping quadrupled and the cost of the goods did too, right? So the ones that were prospering during that time had access to the goods right then and could sell them, right? Those were the ones who could accelerate their prices too. They were able to, because they had inventory, they could make it. I, I think Ernie, what you were just describing too, made me think about that. It just made me think about when we go into potential issues, which I think that's why this podcast is so important today, is do you believe that we're closer to a top or to a bottom, right? Do you feel like the next six to 18 months are an upward trend in our economy, a flat trend, or potentially a downtrend? Well, 
if if you're a little pessimistic like I am, you're looking at it and you're saying, hey, there's a lot of things that are have been off, but now they're all starting to happen together. And when you see these sort of things happening, you see interest rates rising, you see um, companies that are they're they're trying to buy down mortgages, if you will, on the properties they're selling uh, for turnkey buyers. You start thinking about how uh, banks are now lowering the the rate in which they will lend against certain real estate properties or business projects. It makes you very concerned that maybe they are also reading that same thing that we are. So I think what you're telling us and what we're talking about here is when we're storing capital, what are we doing? We're not playing the just in time world, which I think so many of us do. We just, we have a system that's so small that it doesn't have enough capital in it to take the the big situations that happen in life. We are forced to go outside of it. All right, I'm gonna lift leave you with one example. This is something that was actually shared recently with our group. We did a webinar and the individual who was doing the webinar was sharing a strategy of how he was um, able to build some passive income and different things. And he was saying, hey, before I did this though, I, I did this crazy thing where I wanted to put in, I think it was $300,000 into the insurance policy. And I knew that I was going to have to have a chunk of money to invest into this asset. And I didn't think it would happen quick enough for me to be able to make to get the insurance policy funded and then turn around and take out the loan to be able to do the deal. It was going to be too close of a time window with like a couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. So what I did is I went to the bank against my credit and I took out a loan, an unsecured loan. That's pretty sick and crazy right there. And I funded my insurance policy with the loan. But I only did that because I knew that the investment I was just about to make was about to start cash flowing and I was going to have a place for it. And I didn't want to miss out on one, not getting the insurance policy in force and two, being able to get that investment in place so I could start creating the cash flow. And he showed us, Joey, an amazing case study of what he's been able to do by using that. Again, extreme example, not for everybody. But I love the creativity of what a mind starts to think about how we can supercharge our own system, given our own abilities and parameters. Well, right. and just Russ, I will add this. The result of that action, this was the most powerful thing that I think he said in that example. By him supercharging that policy on the front end, which is what we're talking about today, right? All these things are ways that you can supercharge your system. But by him taking that step and doing that, the result was in uh, it, when he was age 70 to 90, that one policy was going to create an additional $100,000 a year in tax-free passive income to him. Okay, outside of the investments that he was using this, this policy to create, which were in the, in the neighborhood of $280,000 a year, just those. He was adding an additional $100,000 a year. That's where I think that this comes home to roost is, what are you doing to maximize your system? And what is the result that you're missing if you don't take that action? So anyway, that's, that's my, I'll, I'll let, let that be my final take. How about that, Russ? I love that. All right, Ern, final thought. I'll take $100,000 a year of passive income just by adding the infinite banking process to, to what I'm already doing. Sign me up. All right. Come, come see me tomorrow. We'll, we'll, we'll get the paperwork in order. <laughs> <laughs> as long as you can help me. JD, final thought. You know, I, I think as people were listening to this, they were probably looking for some, you know, little hack uh, on what they could do differently to, to their policy, to their next one. And I think uh, there's a lot of, posers in the industry, I'll say it, wow. uh, that over that over sensationalize IBC to try to make it something that it's not. And the reality is, is that supercharging your IBC is what is it going to take to get you closer to financial freedom? How can I use my system to get me closer to financial freedom? Um, and so if, if you're uh, out there listening to, to people that are overly sensationalizing uh, IBC and adding all these extra widgets and trinkets and different vernacular to make it sound super sexy, run as fast as you can. Uh, Cause those folks are posers. <laughs> Mark Hargucci. What is yes, Alex? Um, is, that, is, that the, is that the question? <laughs> yeah, of course. Supercharge your system. Absolutely. And, and again, remember 
it's the infinite banking concept. The, the name of Nelson's book is Becoming Your Own Banker, not getting your life insurance policy. And so it's an infinite banking concept. And if you can implement the concept, catch the concept, implement it in your day-to-day, -day, you will, by default, begin to go faster and faster. And just like Ricky Bobby said, I want to go fast. I want to go fast. <laughs> uh, yeah, no doubt. All right. So we broke this down for you today. We, we talked about the things that you can stop or start doing by just uh, doing some self-introspective that may help you find cash flows that you hadn't even considered. Secondly, we talked about how you can win by being around others and gave you great examples of those. And then lastly, we did throw in some kind of craziness, a little bit of outside the box thinking, some opportunities of ways that people have been able to build their systems that maybe create an idea in your brain that maybe that you'd never even considered because you got to hear. Well, we're so grateful that you were here. Thank you for listening as always. If you haven't already taken a chance, rate, review the show. That's how other people find it. That's how we beat the big corporate algorithm. As always, have an amazing day. This has been the Wealth Without Wall Street podcast. Don't forget to subscribe to the show to break free of the Wall Street mindset and begin building wealth on your own terms in places you understand so that your wealth will never run dry. See you next episode.